Yep. I have oh my God. Two GoPros. Which which GoPros are these? This is the uh, the Hero Five and the Session. Oh, how do you like the Session? Session's okay. It's just hard harder to figure out if it's on actually on or not. Oh yeah. yeah so yeah. because of without the thing, but then uh, so then I'll do stills. Could do video. I'll do stills with the S. Yep. And uh, typically I have a, a few different lenses, but Whoa. typically I'll use the the forty five here so that's oh that's a pretty a CS. and so that gives me more of a 35 millimeter um uh thing the s has Sweet. very minimal buttons yeah on the back uh -huh. um and this is of course medium format style yeah so that's you know it's just really just actually just a larger yeah. uh a larger 35 millimeter yeah um frame so it just has like more pixels 37 megapixels but you know, it's uh, the the lenses themselves are actually uh, supposedly specced for up to 100 megapixels. Wow. So that gives you an idea of where like it will probably go with it uh -huh. at some point. There's some like uh, some things, and then I have a 70 millimeter uh, CS lens, which mm -hmm. is more like the 50. Yep. Uh, in in you know full frame terms. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one that I have, and those two are also central shutter, which means they mm -hmm. have a leaf shutter oh, okay. inside the lens. So the, so the shutter's inside the lens, so it uh -huh. works pretty well. Yep. And then the last one I have is the 100, which does not have a leaf shutter. And uh -huh. this works more like a 90. And it's actually, it's an F2, which is very, 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 very close to an Octolux. Whoa, that's pretty epic. You know, uh, in medium format terms, because medium format has more uh, bokeh uh -huh. than uh, other. So this is a, this is a very good lens. Yeah. These lenses uh, are not cheap. <laughs> uh, the camera itself is not cheap. I mean, look cheap. at that fucking case. Right, right. Yeah, this is the this is the case, and it does. You know, it comes with a grip. Yeah. Or not comes with, but you can get the grip separately. Yeah. So you have like extra battery. Mm -hmm. These are the batteries. I have uh, one in, inside of it, and then you have like a little space for your battery here. Yeah. Uh, this is the fast battery charger, so this makes your battery charger go look a little bit faster. I keep you know, CF cards, and then uh, in the space where I only have three lenses, because that's the only three that I really want, uh -huh. and then the other space I just keep a Q, mm. uh, like a Q, just oh, in nice. case I need backup, backup uh, in in the realm of autofocus. Bust out lenses. the red. Where right. is the right. red? So. What we've all been waiting for. So the next step, so this is what I would use for stills. Uh, we're gonna get there. Okay. So next step is, just keep this open. Yep. Keep it over here. Just to give yep. you all an idea of what a typical photo shoot is. Oh my God, that's ridiculous. Up. So uh, I would keep the red in this peak design bag, yeah. uh, just basically because of the here that's not in here at the moment. Uh -huh. uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Yep. Uh, peak design bag is great because you can open it up, Ooh. you can pull things off from the side, you can put lenses in here, uh -huh. you can put all of your cords. There's a lot of different cords. There's a charger here. Uh -huh. The red actually has uh, uh, an ability to plug into a wall so you don't have to use their batteries. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Uh, and then also I use the laptop, the laptop part here to pull out the reds. Monitor. Do, 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 do. So this is just a little monitor that goes on top of the red. Oh, and okay. this monitor actually holds all of the keys to getting into the menu system and actually watching the red. So it's you know it's got the red situation. Yep. And then you come over here. Yep. And you have the red. Do 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 do. So. Whoa. So wait, put on the table real quick, yeah. just so we can take a look at. How massive this is! Wait, so I've never seen a red in person. So why don't you just give me kind of a, a tutorial low. or a download or like what am I even what am I even looking at? Well, what you're looking at here is like this is the Red Scarlet W. So this yeah. is a this is a um, sort of the entry level pro uh, cinema camera from. Red, which is an American company mm -hmm. that makes cinema cameras for motion pictures, television, uh, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I got the Scarlet W because the 
Um, uh, they have a, a smaller version that comes in a full kit mm -hmm. uh, the, that you can actually even get from Apple. Yep. And uh, it's a, uh, called a Raven, and it only comes with one lens mount. Well, mm -hmm. since I use a number of different types of lenses and I'd like to do other things, I wanted to get this one. Yep. It shoots 5K. It uses the older Dragon sensor. They have a helium sensor and a Mostrel sensor now, and they also have a, what's called a Gemini, which is uh -huh. like super low light. Uh -huh. uh, so I got it with the EF mount. So mm -hmm. right now it's holding on. This is sort of my cap. Lens cap. Lens cap. Nice. The Canon 40 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Uh, lens cap. The lens mount is interesting because unlike uh, lens mounts for actual cameras, it has a locking function. So Why is it a locking function? Well, because um, cinema cinema lenses tend to uh, sit very lightly yeah. on the sensor. Now it's still locked. You know, if you don't lock this one in, it's fine. But like most cinematographers, will understand the locking function because because PL lenses, the cinema lenses that are uh, originally made by uh, Panavision yep. uh, and RAPL mount um, don't have a locking function onto a camera body at all. You have to use this like separate locking thing. Mm. So I think that that's probably the reason that they use this. Yeah. Um, the red is, uh, the, the red all comes in, uh, everything is separate. It's, it's very much like you know, film, old medium f format day. It's almost like a, a Hasselblad, right? Like a Hasselblad. It's quite modular. Yeah, right, it's modular, or, mm -hmm. or like the phase one. So what mm -hmm. you're doing, and it's in that same price range. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you're doing is, is that, you know, the handle is separate. Oh, yeah. This, this is what's called the brain. So this is what Where's houses. Where's the brain? The brain is this part right here. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So this entire part right here all the way to this part. This yep. part is separate. This mm -hmm. just you can get separate types of modules for this. Yeah. This one that I have has an HDMI out and like a number of other different outs, uh, you know, USB and these are special cinema uh, out modules and then it also has what's called a V mount and this is for the battery. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Which I will show you in a second. Yeah. Okay. So then and then the handle and you can get different handles. You can also get a, a separate handle that goes over here so you can hold it like mm -hmm. with two handles. It's very modular and then uh, the brain also comes with the media reader and then the media which is this which is proprietary for red. If I can pull it out. What is it? So it's, it's just a, it's called a red mag. And what it is, is it's a mm. mini SSD. Oh, it's its own mini it's mo SSD. It's SSD, and it's actually made out of aluminum. It's really light and really actually- Really light, yeah. Feels really nice, actually. Yeah, and then this, this one's 100 and 160 gig. You can go up to one terabyte. Uh, uh, most people would like do a 480 gig or something. Yeah. Uh, you, you have to realize that like, with the red itself, you're shooting like this one shoots up to 5K. The Mostremo mm -hmm. shoots 8K video. So 8K. 8K video. That's insane. So then, and then you, of course, down with the size. So the red also has like uh, the power button and the record button here. Mm -hmm. It also has a record. I'm sorry. It has a record button on the front. It has these two that are customized. Wait, sorry. Uh, where's the where's the record button? So there's a record button here, which okay. is the power button. Yep. Yeah. Okay. There's also a record button on the front here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then with these two auxiliary things that you can decide to um, assign whatever functions that you want. Yep. And then at the same time, it also has a record button on the top. Oh, okay. Right here for the, for the handle. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like you have three different ways. You can also assign each one of these buttons a different function if you want to. I've assigned this button um, sort of a shutter sound. Oh, so uh -huh. that like if I'm shooting someone that would expect like there to be a shutter sound to change like a model or something like that since yeah. I do a lot of fashion stuff, mm -hmm. I can hit that shutter sound. And what that actually does is, is it's a continuous mo continuous movement. Yeah. You can either make that shutter sound be a burst, uh -huh. so you can have a burst up to 100 frames per second, yeah. or you can, uh, which means that like, you'll realize this is raw. Mm -hmm. So if you're shooting in raw and you're doing 100 frames per second, yeah. then what you're doing is you're getting uh, I mean, that's a lot faster than a burst rate yeah. for like a Nikon or a, or a Canon, yeah. you know, uh, you're going to get each frame is, is a burst. 
Um, I don't use it that much. I use it for continuous. Mm -hmm. So like you're doing video and then what it does is it does this shutter sound and it does a marking. It marks each one of the frames. So then, oh. then when you take it into uh, either you know, Photoshop or some other program or something like that, you will see where the markings are and you can take those marks. And if you're a little bit before, a little bit after, like, you know, sometimes if you're taking a photo and you're like, yeah, you know, if I would have caught it just that yeah. one second before, well, now you can because uh, there's also functions on the red. Okay, so then we have the monitor that I just okay. showed you. So that's okay. the monitor. So the monitor, literally, you just put on here and it's got this little screw function to where you can just screw it in. You don't need hardware to, uh, to connect it, right? So you look like you're almost done, right? Except yep. for the battery. Oh man. So then I have this case. Okay. Okay. So that's a pretty big case. So this case, this Whoa. is the battery. Batteries. Holy crap. Wait, wait, put the, put the put okay. that back in there. Okay. Holy crap. Wait. So wait, so this is the battery charger and two batteries. Holy shit, why is this so big? Uh, because this, these, we have to realize that like, unlike a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, the, the, the red is set up for professional cinema. So yeah. that means that it sometimes has to go all day. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. So then these batteries last, uh, a long time. So you, <laughs> so you can disconnect them and this is like one battery. And this is uh, one company that does it, Indie Pro. Yeah. Uh, you can get, uh, this is a V mount. There's also uh, other different types of mount batteries. There's yeah. smaller ones. Red themselves make the V, v volt, which are like half this size, yeah. but then they also have about half the power. Yeah. So go with this. So then okay. when you come back over to the red, so. you take this, it's got a V mount. And you can okay. get other adapters for this back. Okay, so, so this let back. Let me do a close up on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, the back is separate from the body. Wait, so one second. So you could detach this back from detach the. Detach that back, yeah. How do you detach it? Um, do you need some extra? Yes. So to detach any of the any of the things you need, uh, so, so, these tools. Oh, those stupid Allen wrenches. Or something yeah, like that. so this is like a little bit different Allen wrench. Uh -huh. So it's got like a. It looks more like a you know five prong uh, whatever thing, but it's also use, you know red branded. Oh, and then you use that to just. Yeah, and then they also that. have other Allen wrenches oh, for the other. Yeah, because I figure if you're actually shooting something, you're probably not going to exactly unscrew that. And often. then and then red also makes something to where you can they have a have a very specific. Uh, it lo looks like a, a Swiss Army knife, and okay. it has all of the tools. So I did this bad boy. So you just take this, and it actually it looks like it's like not going to connect because you're like, okay, I have to put this on the V mount, this, this, which is, I guess, the reason they call it a V mount. Yeah. And you just click it on like that, and you have to make sure that it's kind of clicked in. Yeah, there's a name sure. uh, there, and it has to click in. Ooh. So you kind of click in, and then there's an eject button here to eject it so you can click it back out. Oh. Whatever. And then you have to, then you can you've got the monitor on, got the handle or you know whatever proprietary handle. Some people don't even use a the handle; they'll yeah. just carry the machine, carry it like this. Wait, so so pick up that bad boy. Mm -hmm. How 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 heavy is it? Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, it's a lot it's a lot lighter than what you'd think, but it is definitely heavier heavier than a DSLR. Mm -hmm. uh, the brain itself is about three pounds. Added, uh, added on to this and this and the monitor, you're looking about like five to six pounds for like a basic, basic body. Um, and then, I mean, to be honest, it kind of feels like more like about like within the eight to 10 pounds range. How do your biceps feel? Oh, they feel great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then you have all this set up. Um, now, if I don't want, and, and this, this monitor only oh. tilts forward uh -huh. and back. Okay. So you can t tilt it here, and it also. Oh, so in, in case I want to do selfies on the red. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> you can. It won't twist all the way around. Yeah. But it'll twist to a side. And the reason that they have it this way is that, like, say for instance, you're you're sitting there, and d d now there's notice there's an HDMI port. Yeah. Right? So that HDMI port does numerous different things. Mm. Um, but. Uh, if you were on an actual set, yeah. 
you can actually add another piece of equipment. Da, 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 da. <coughs> this is a this is a monitor. What the hell is that? So this is a Tomos Ninja. Now <laughs> this is something that you can use actually with um, with uh, Panasonic G GH5, oh, wow. okay. the G9, wow. you know uh, various other things. Uh -huh. um, it is also a recorder. Is what do you mean it's a recorder? So this has an SSD. Oh whoa. So this SSD is a hundred, this one I think is 240 megabytes. Wow. Um, and then you're recording directly from a, um, a RED or a, like I said, the Panasonic or whatever. Yep. What it does for the smaller cameras is, the smaller cameras usually record in what's called 8-bit. Yeah. Which means that you're not getting like a full, you're not getting a full uh, resolution that the sensor can go. Most of these sensors can go up to 10 or 12 bit. Yeah. Uh, the you know Lumix uh, can go up to 10 bit. Um, the uh, like a SL can go to 10 bit. Yeah. Which also is part of the other part of the equation. One yeah. second. Okay. So the other part of the equation is is that this like any uh, any uh, modern mirrorless camera. This is my SL is also a, uh, can shoot 4K, right? Yeah. Well, but it does, but the problem is, is that you're not getting the full 4K for say like uh, Adobe ProRes, yeah. uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, Apple ProRes. Yeah. Uh, so what you wanna do is you want to use an external monitor mm. like the Ninja uh -huh. back over here. Yeah. Like a Ninja to connect this via um, HDMI to this. Oh, so it just connects via HDMI. Yeah, but you oh. can also do that from the red. Yeah. And then you have these little, little things on the back um, that are connectors. So it's a little arm. Oh, you know, that's cute. Like, and then you can connect that arm to, say, one of these slots here. Oh, so essentially it's just like a little mini tripod. Right. Right. A little. Oh, you can put it on the tripod slot on the bottom if you want to do that. Why would you why would you put it on the bottom? That seems well. I mean, if 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 you if you don't have it, if you're just hand holding, and you want oh. someone to have a second a second option or a second monitor, oh. or you can actually like take this out. Uh, some monitors are wireless, yeah. so you can to put a wireless adapter here, and then mm. someone can stand away from it yeah. with the monitor and be able to do things like check focus, oh. check whatever. But this is actually this one has to actually be connected to this because. To, for the SSD to work, either on a mirrorless camera yep. or on the red, it has to be connected directly to the sensor. All right. So how would you mount this, or what do you want to put that on the? I'm, I'm not going to do that on this one, but I'm going to put it over here to the side because I'm going to talk about like a full cinema setup. Okay. 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 So oh, and also these are the batteries for the Ninja. So on the back of the Ninja. You also have these big <laughs> batteries. These are big Sony style batteries oh, for video. So you have to actually connect yeah. them. But it, uh, the monitors are the things that like actually uh, have the, to take care of most of the battery power. So uh, to be honest. So anyway, yep. so the red, let's just turn it on. Yep. So you just push yep. and hold the side button to turn yep. on? And then you have to Oh my God, it sounds like yeah. a PC turning on. Yes. That is pretty epic. So, is it booting or? Yeah, it's booting. And it'll take a second. Oh. So it takes about 24 seconds. Wow. Uh, for the red to boot up completely. That's pretty impressive. So that's a little bit odd, a little bit stranger than um, improper shutdown. It's fine. <laughs> um, it's like when you eject an SD card without its permission. Yes. Yeah, I think that I let the battery run out last time. That's all good. Or I just pull, pulled the pulled the battery that I was doing. Initializing. Initializing. So this is a touch screen. You can probably see my fingerprints on it from my last shoot, which was last Friday. Uh huh. Used and abused, baby. Used and abused. Okay, cool. So, whoa, that that UI actually looks super cool. Yeah. So what you do is you have like the basic setup for. Now this is in raw. So yeah. just to give you an idea, I'm gonna change it off of raw. Yeah. Uh, Monitoring. No. Nope. Um, let's go overlays. Yes, tools. So I'm going to turn off raw. 
just so you can kind of see yeah. where it is. So, um, and this is at 4K. Yeah. We can take this all the way up to 5K, which I'll 5K, wow, well, yeah. Okay. Um, the other, you know, and then it changes, the screen changes to where you can see it in 5K. Oh. Okay. So what is, um, so this sounds like a newbie question, but what's the difference between 5K and 4K? Um, for just resolution. Resolution? Yeah, resolution size. So um, the red has a red sensor, yep. which we can look at later. Uh -huh. I like, like literally the color is red in yep. the sensor. And the sensor um, for 5K cameras is like 13.4 megapixels, which uh -huh. seems really small in the yeah. um, world of uh, still cameras, uh -huh. but uh, actually, uh, it's at an APS-C size sensor. Yeah. Uh, you're looking, basically, I mean, it's a, a Super 35. Uh, you're looking at something that's going to have more of a more resolution than you can possibly need, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, 5K, so 5K being above 4K, it's like a 5K monitor, and it's like you're just getting more hmm. more pixels, yeah. more, more pixels resolution. Um, uh, and the size, and it also gives you more depth in lenses. So, like, say for instance, um, one of the ones that they showed me when I when I got this was an 8K, mm -hmm. and you could see <laughs> that the size of the 8K. Yeah. Uh, just a sensor size or the sensor area, whatever. If I change lenses, if I change, like, say, a 60 millimeter lens or a, or a 35 millimeter lens on one, mm -hmm. you would see the full 35 millimeter area. Yeah. And then on the 5K, it actually condenses it, so you're not going to get the full area. So, it's, so I would say that the S35 is more like an APS-C. Okay. Uh, and then and then they have like two other formats, including like the RE, uh, which is another cinema camera. They go up to the RE65, which is more like a medium format. Oh wow! Okay, so let's go back to this boy. So we'll go back to this. Um, so wake okay. up again, friend. Yeah, wake up. Okay, so uh, it's a real, just real simple. Once you get into the five K settings, you also have a thing called ratio. Mm. So this ratio is based on uh, not necessarily on whether it's five K or whatever. You have five to one, two to one, and going down. And what this basically means is this is going to give you a different compression yeah. for the files. So 16 to 1 is like, you know, good for like if you're just going to like YouTube or or you're going to video or yeah. something like that. If you want a full resolution file, you go as high as it goes. Since I'm at 24 frames per second, yeah. I'm not able to go to the full to 1. Oh, quick question. Yes. Why 24 frames per second? Uh, 24 frames per second is, well, it's more cinematic. Mm -hmm. So, say for instance, if you're looking at a motion picture yeah. on um, Netflix or yeah. anything like that, you're gonna and, and it's something from cinema, or something from that you could go to the you know theater and see. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be shot typically in 24 frames per second, or actually 23.98 frames per second. Okay. If you're looking at something broadcast, it's gonna uh, in the United States, you're gonna be shooting, you're gonna be getting something that's gonna be shot more at like a resolution of uh, 30 frames per second or 29.98 frames per second, 97 yeah. frames per second, which is more US version. Uh, PAL, which is uh, another compression format, which is Europe and Asia, yeah. is actually, they actually just keep everything at 24 frames per second or 23.98 frames so per second. So it's kind of like the industry standard. It's the industry cinema. standard, yeah. Okay. And a lot of this stuff is based on industry standard. Red's a little different. Hmm. Um, red kind of, so, the way cinema cameras work is that um, they kind of work on the same premise as they always have. Yeah. So there's no real difference. I must have my, my settings like set to where it's like just going to go off whenever it wants to. Um, they're, they're kind of set up on this. Well, Okay, they're kind of set up on this like old old school way of thinking to where yeah. everything is based on film. Yeah. Uh, Red's a little bit different because what they decided was that they decided to base it on what if the film never existed. Oh. So they kind of like made everything like you know the, the, the highest digital resolution mm. as opposed to other. Um, and here's another thing. So this is so I'm framing this, and if you see that little green thing, that tells you when it's in focus. Well, here's another oh, way to tell cool. you when it's in focus. 
Whoa! So it's instead like of, we're in the matrix now. Yeah, it's like instead of focus picking, you have this thing called line, uh, and and then That's you just get epic. these lines. So you can. So I have a, a function button to where it's turned off and on. So I can see like everything that's in focus over there. That is epic. And then like whatever. So you can change your ISO. The base ISO of a red is ISO at 800, yep. which I found really funny because when I'm shooting, when I'm shooting most of the time with my still cameras, yep. I base everything at ISO 800. Oh, interesting. So it came so like very, uh, very intuitive to me. Yep. Uh, you can change your, you know, you can change the the different K and the different, you know. Uh, Balances. Balances yep. there. Uh, you can change. When you go into overlays, you can go into tools to where you can go. Uh, these are false color tools. So you can actually do oh. focus, which is a focus peaking. So oh. you do have focus peaking even if you don't. So if you can kind of see where things become like a little bit whiter, yeah. that means that they're in focus. So focus oh. peaking is really good, but it's kind of harder to see. So that's why I kind of switched to the. the well, I saw something they have um, grid overlays too. Yes. So which ones they actually have available? Uh, so then we have Edge, which is that. We have the Geoscope, mm -hmm. which is an interesting. So you can name two different things, so that way you can see what's, what the highlights. Uh, that are almost looks good. like the heat mapping. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And and um, and then then that goes back to Edge focus. Then we have video yeah. to where it like really goes into more like the heat mapping kind wow, of like thing. Wow, that's so, so you cool. You can see what actually works and what doesn't. Um, if you're using, so this is the Canon mount, if you're using a Canon lens, everything can be auto-focused. Oh yeah. Um, you also have your exposure thing, so it can mm -hmm. tell you what's in exposure. One thing that the red people told me, yep. which I thought was really interesting and kind of counterintuitive to the way that we think in shooting stills, is that you want to kind of adjust your exposure. You're gonna to want to adjust your exposure based on um, based on these red areas, based on these oh. overexposed areas, because you want to shoot lighter instead of like shooting like you know exposure composition. You want to go like negative one, negative two yeah. on a still image. You don't do that in cinema, or at least you don't do that with a red. You actually overexpose. Oh, so it's better. So for cinema cameras, it's better to overexpose. Better to overexpose because then you can bring it back in the highlights. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. So oh, interestingly enough, super yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that that I found that really interesting. Um, let's see, uh, and then uh, another thing that you can do. You can just go, you can shoot it to where you just see it in raw, which mm. then looks very gray. Yep. So then you're just seeing like all of the things that you can expose for. Mm. Uh, let me see, this is my autofocus. So there, I just turned on autofocus. And mm. with, a, with, a, with a lens like this, it kind of, kind of hunts a little bit for mm -hmm. my taste. So I just turn it off. And, uh, but like, look at that bokeh. And this is just like a simple, simple lens. It's very, I mean, Simple this is a Canon, Canon 40, 40, 40 Right. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to switch this to the Leica R lens, which is like kind of a preferred lens for um, for a lot of cinematographers. What they do is they turn them they uh, oh well they turn them into lenses. So just one second. Why do they turn uh, the Leica R well, lenses? Now I found that interesting. So um, because of just the the way Wait, that they let render. Me look, look at the. So which lens is this? So this is the Micro Elmerit R 2.8 60 millimeter, and then it's taken by a comp the old R lens taken by a, com a company called Duclos lenses, mm -hmm. right? And so what they, they, what Duclos did was besides putting it in this little nice pelican nice, case, nice pelican case, is that what they did was they take the Micro Elmer. It's funny because they put an Aeroflex, which is a cinema camera. Um, you know, lens cap yep, <laughs> on nice. it, and they rehouse it. Hmm. So they rehouse the lens to where it has these, these what they're called point, um, point eight, um, zero point eight uh, teeth. Mm -hmm. To where this is good for a follow focus reel. Mm. But also, if you notice, it's really smooth, and it's yeah. kind of also like even maybe slowed down a little bit from mm. like the film variation of it, mm -hmm. right? So that it can do, um, so it can do like the follow focus. Oh. So and then also all of these f stops are declicked. 
Oh, so it's not going to make clicking sounds. There's no clicking gonna... sounds, but also you can get in between f stops. Oh, that's cool. So if you have f16, f22, yeah. or like, you know, f11, f16, because in Cinema Land, they have what's called T stops instead of f stops, which are a little bit more accurate mm -hmm. on the stops than. than, than Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a macro lens. So that means if I oh. extend this all the way out, I'm going to get like some really oh, great so, macro shots. So you get just some macro shots of my eye close up. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I can show you like some of the post processing over there on my laptop. Okay, cool. Uh, so that you'll see how this does. So maybe, I mean, I don't necessarily need to put this on the machine. Except it is kind of interesting. Let me, let me see. Put it, on, put it on the bad one. Let's see what okay. it looks like. So what, the way I would do this. Oh, and another thing. Because of the way this is locked, yep. you don't. Uh, this is set up to where you don't need to turn off the camera. Oh, that's useful. To change your lens. That's good. And because um, it's uh, kind of set differently. Oh, so while you're installing the new lens, Bill, can you explain to me? <laughs> you're, you know, mostly primarily known as a still photographer. Yes. Why are you making the jump to video land? Why does it interest you? And what are your your creative thoughts and etc. Um, well, partially. Oh, you might want to look at that. Okay. Oh, that's. Can you see that the lens is uh, the uh, the mo uh, the. I'm sorry. The sensor is actually red. So that that's. Is so if anyone asks you why really red is called a red, that's why. Wow, I've never seen a red sensor. That is sick. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, the main reason is is that well, I mean, besides like a lot of people asking me to asking me, oh, do you need a do you need a DP for your shoot so that we can get some video and and things like that. The other thing is it started to interest me because like in shooting like in shooting a lot of things like uh, you know like Eric and I do where we you know we're real interested in the equipment we're real interested in like the you know the ways of storytelling and things of yeah. that nature which came first like the cinema camera or the still camera well yeah. in a sense the still camera but then the still camera changed when um, Leica and others made 35 millimeter yeah so 35 millimeter was based on 35 millimeter 35 millimeter motion picture stuff yeah uh -huh. right so when getting into storytelling with a uh, with a cinema camera you can take a lot of your knowledge of still photography uh -huh. and translate it very 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 well to motion yeah. you're just learning like a few other things mm. like you know it's like uh, who would know um, you know uh, when you're setting up uh, the red you're setting it up sometimes as a um, you're, you're setting up the red you know and and you're using uh, frames per second, but you're also setting your shutter speed, yeah. right? Well, in cinema, they instead of having shutter speed, they use what's called shutter angle. Shutter angle. Right. So, and red is kind of good in a sense because they 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 let the still photographers know. I mean, the whole camera system is based around still and motion photography. And yeah. In fact, there's a like a funny little thing that you can do. I can show you. Um, here in a second, yeah. uh, <laughs> where you can get the shutter sound That's from funny. from from stills, and it just like you know pops into in, the, in those motion frames like I yeah. explained before but like uh, they make it really easy red makes it really easy for you to understand what a cinematographer or a director of photography on a film set yeah. would understand in the cinema world and oh. then you think of people like Kubrick yeah. and you think of who was like you know a still photographer at the at first um, you know, uh, even like Ryan Johnson, who did The Last Jedi, I mean, he was carrying around the Leica around his neck, oh, around really? the sets. Yeah, he had That's an M6 cool. carrying a, a Leica around the set, uh -huh. uh, taking still photos. So, you know, so it's like the worlds are very close. And, and I mean, I'm in Los Angeles, so I figured it was the best, you know, <laughs> yeah. best of both, both worlds. Yeah, no, because I'm super excited because I think you have a great crossover between street, fashion, editorial work, and not only for you to incorporate still photos, but the moving picture, I think will be uh, a next evolution in the work of oh, Bill Brown. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And also the really interesting thing about the red files, and I think that like a lot of the newer cinema cameras, uh, Blackmagic, uh, which has been around for a few years, especially Blackmagic Pro, is, and also the, their, their small boxes, and the new one that's uh, uh, coming out in September, I think, yeah. uh, is that they all shoot 
either ProRes RAW now, mm -hmm. that, that you know Apple has a RAW version, mm -hmm. or they actually shoot RAW. Um, oh, wow, yeah. So Red has its own version of RAW, which is the 3D R, uh, R files. And um, so as I've been over the last you know, little while working with the Red, pulling those files, it's like I can do everything that I do in Lightroom or mm. Capture One, yep. whatever, to these files, and you get like a really interesting dynamic approach to mm. colorizing, uh, actually pulling stills from the from the from the video That's and like having so cool. like you know if I'm taking a 16:9 cinematic shot yeah that's actually 16 inches by 9 inches that's pretty awesome right you know so as a still yeah. and that's every single frame yeah and at 24 frames per second you're getting like a burst the entire time this camera can actually another thing is like a lot of the, the motion um a lot of the and then there's the there's the uh yeah, micro lens on there. So it's still, it's kind of a small kit for a cinema camera. Yeah, all things considered. All things considered, and it does, and, and then with this it does macro, and then you can also have like a number of different things. Yeah. Now if you notice, it's like it's really slow to kind of pull out yeah. you know, the focus, and then like if you're changing like the, um, the f-stops, it's also very, very, very slow. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's good for that. Uh, the other thing, oh, let me see, with these uh, still images, it's like, because the sensor size is larger, maybe it's larger than Micro Four Thirds, yep. but it's like, but when you have these, so cinema lenses do this funny thing. Yep. Um, all cinema lenses have bokeh. It's like in street photography, Eric tells you, I might tell you, it's like just, you know, take the highest f-stop that you can go yep. to uh -huh. and try to get everything in focus because it makes a more interesting scene. Yep. Which is very, very, very difficult with cinema yep. if you're using actual cinema lenses. The cinema lenses are usually larger, whatever, but at F, I mean, or at T16, you still have bokeh, you still have depth of field. Yep. So it's like, so everything has to be lit very, very, very well. Yep. Well, one thing that Red and a lot, and the, you know, GH5 and like a lot of these other like camera systems do is they end up giving us a lot more uh, leeway because we don't have to light everything as perfectly yep. because we have the raw or we mm. have ProRes that yep. can do a lot of the raw capabilities and now ProRes raw, they can do a lot of the things that a raw file can do so that you can get that like depth a little bit more. You can get more cinematic things. Mm -hmm. You want to shoot wide. You know, it's like I've always, another thing with like the transition, I've always liked to shoot 28. Right? So it's like 28 is actually a small <laughs> a vocal length for cinema. Yeah. You know, uh, some, photogra uh, some cinem cinematographers and also the history of cinematography, like Akira Kurosawa shot a lot at 50 millimeter, 75 oh, millimeter, yeah, uh -huh. right? But he would shoot very far, he would shoot very far back so that he could get more in the scene. A lot of people shoot like very close up and get like a, uh, Thing. So this is a 60 millimeter lens, and the reason I got it was because I'm like, well, macro, so I can get in close, and I can do others. So if I turn this back on, mm -hmm. yeah. So if I turn this back on, and so we see this 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 uh, plant over here, my wife's plant. Yep. And then I can a nice plant. Yeah, I can get in really close, right? And then like if I if I move this all the way out, I can get in Whoa. super close with it, right? Yeah. Right? And then as you're moving out, and this is a reason for it, as you're moving out, you can kind of, this is what pulling focus is. You can keep it in focus. Whoa. So you're keeping, I'm not doing the best of job at it at the moment, but you're keeping it in focus as you're pulling out. Wait. Uh, I want you to do is uh, go over to my mom. Let's see how fo close you can focus to her eye. Okay. All right. Hello, family. Hello. So Hi. this is Bill's <laughs> super epic, crazy camera. So let's okay. So let's let me try to get the focus right. Okay. That's my mom in the background, and then that's my mom in the foreground here. So <laughs> you could see. Oh, so that's kind of cute. So we got mom in the background. Then we got mom in the foreground. Uh -huh. 
So how close can you focus to my mom? Okay, so I'm gonna start coming in. I'm doing what's called pull focus. I'm not exactly perfect with it. Yep. Okay, and then a little bit closer. Is it extended all the way out? Wow. Yeah. So to get close focus. Whoa. So yeah. That is amazing. Cindy, come over here. Whoa, wait, hold up. Let me, one second. Let me just take a, get a close up on the monitor. My mom's wait, eyeball wait, wait. on the red. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh wow. Your, your focus is pretty, pretty good. Accurate. Yeah. It seems like it's like upward. That is too. super mm -hmm. epic. Being stable. Wow. Oh. Uh -huh. There we go. Did right. you get it? Yeah, I got it. Huh? So, oh. so yeah, so that's 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 kind of like what the macro lens does. And then that's at the amazing. same time, at the 60 exactly. millimeter, I can also. So I'm way back it's here. Like I'm way back here, and I'm getting Emma's head. So, <laughs> so Emma's just sitting on the floor, right? So Emma's but, on the floor. So that's Emma in the background. We have Emma, and then we got Emma here. And then, in if the I want to make sure I got the right focus, I'll just turn on the the. Um, uh, line and then instead Wait, of so using look at that. that yeah whoa it's like we're looking at her in the matrix yeah so you're gonna get like a lot more of whoa uh, and then you just turn that off when you want to go back to focus whoa that's cray cray yeah check focus hi Emma and then you can actually go into overlays wow and if you really want to really want to do it you can go into magnify so whoa. like I can I can check that out and then even in magnify I can go into the line focus, mm -hmm. right? Emma, you look great in lines too. So if you it's see, lines. if you see over here, that's what it's, it's doing one to one. But uh -huh. you can also do it at two. You can mm -hmm. also do it at three, uh -huh. four, right? And then you also have um, different wow. settings. So like even even the buttons on the side of the monitor Wait, all have a different here. function. Uh -huh. What are the buttons? So this one this one goes into goes into the, the close focus mode okay uh -huh. so so that way that a cinematographer can focus in mm -hmm. right a little bit more and then that mm -hmm. green shows like that you're in focus wow right but then you know just to double check it and make sure that it works correctly you have that mode and I can raise that up and or not it's but whatever so then and then you can click that off and then it goes back to full frame Wow. right so that you know, like say if you have a talking head or uh -huh. if you have something like that. Now, another thing is, is that realize if you see that little sign there, it says raw, right? Mm -hmm. So this is all in raw. That's why it's kind of like out. But that yeah. means that you can take that like as if you would take it into Photoshop, but if you're using like the, the functions or whatever. So every single frame, every single frame of video uh -huh. is, is adjustable you know, uh, to an extreme degree, 16.5 16, 16 stops of dynamic range. That so is very insane. different, very different than anything except for possibly medium format. Oh. Um, and it's not a medium format. It's like, a, as again, it's an APS-C-esque style Super 35 format. Um, now, the interesting thing is, is that like a Lumix or, you know, GH5 or a G9 or whatever also has very similar you know, similar capabilities, um, but a much smaller frame. Uh, but uh, when I talked to a lot, a lot of different rental houses, you know, and they, I asked them like which cameras that they were using for cinema and they were renting out a lot, it was either the Ari, uh, Ari Alexa, which is actually not even a full um, 4K, it's mm -hmm. uh, three point, the 3.4K, uh -huh. uh, exploited up, or you're looking at, uh, you're looking at uh, they're renting the red, yeah, and they're using the red. And if you look at the motion pictures that won Academy Awards this year, it's like mostly Ari and red. Oh, so it's wow. like so one of the reasons to get the camera that's the industry standard. You know, that how big is that camera compared to Ona? I'm kind how of big curious. Is this, Ona? is this a big camera? Oh, it's too heavy. Too heavy. Yeah. Is it bigger than her body? No, it's about as. <laughs> but I mean, it, you can you can still kind of kind of carry That's, it like this. Yeah, and, it's almost like you're holding like Ouija's camera. I know, like, almost like an I mean, eight it by ten. It does look like that, right? It looks like an eight by ten. Yeah. Whatever. 
And I got the bigger monitor too. You can get a smaller monitor, but I like to get a bigger monitor because it was hard to see on that yeah. smaller monitor, you know? So how do you put these files into your computer or your laptop? Okay. Well, you turn it off. Yep. First off. <laughs> That's a good idea. Turn it off. Such a cool toy, huh, Cindy? Oh, you're talking about Ona's toys. Uh-oh. Bill's going to get jealous of Ona's toys. So okay. Bill's toys are a little bit more expensive. Yeah, so far. So far. So you have to take, they have a, so this is the mag card. This has all the, the video files on it. Uh-huh. And you, oh, have, so you have to, plug you have to into, just plug this into here. But what is that? So this is a this is a, a red uh, mag reader. Uh, this one's made specifically called. This is called the G Doc mm -hmm. EV. Uh, so this is a third party okay. version, but it uh -huh. works just as fine. Okay. It's got a it's got a, a US. Um, sorry, it has a HDMI out. Uh -huh. uh, to USB 3 okay. and then since I have the newer MacBook Pro I have to oh fucking <laughs> so many adapters yeah. so many adapters yeah. so which is fine um, I have my little hard drive here mm -hmm. I have my laptop and then I just plug this in just like normal okay um, and then let's see what I have up here so it says the red media is up So I have some stuff that I was working on. Oh, cool! Let's take a look. So, so this should probably not. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah. So this was just a. This is just a video. I'll scroll this back in Final Cut. Um, so this is a video that I've already kind of. You can notice over here that I've done kind of done the color curves for uh -huh. and things of like that. Hey, what's going on? Okay, there we go. Okay, mm -hmm. so there. Hey. Um, well, so anyway, so if you scroll through this, you can kind of see like there's a lot of detail yeah. in the eyes. Uh -huh. And it's like, and when you get closer and closer to it, very similar. What in the world? <laughs> uh, you get very, 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 you know. Wow, of, the like, details in. Well, hold up, let me see if I could focus on them. Right, so look at the detail again. Whoa. So like even even when it's out of focus, you know, it's it's out of focus in a, an interesting way. Yeah. So it's like you know, so it's like and this is like being able to get the contrast, and you're really able to get like this. This, you know, it's just it's just really good footage. Yeah. Um, now, what I did also use, I also used in this shoot, also used the uh, uh, mirrorless, uh, like a SL, yep. uh, on the other side. Yeah. So that I was able to get like similar footage, but like all the majority of the like really epic shots, like yeah. that, you know, yeah. you're gonna get more of a thing. Now, when I'm taking the data off mm -hmm. of the card, like this yeah. is the this is the video itself. Once it's, once it's thing. This is a 4K. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you're just getting. Wow. And the tone rendition of the red. Yeah. And the skin tone just looks so beautiful. Yeah, it's just it's just really, really positive. Yeah. Um, now, when you get into the red digital media. Yep. Say for instance, so we'll go down here, we'll find the one that's your, I think this is the one with your mom in it. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is, the one. this is the one with your mom in it. Okay. Yep. Okay, so you take this and what you do is you open it up. Now it's a, it's, a, it's a weird flow. You can either take this directly into Final Cut okay. or directly into your editor. Oh, interesting. You have to download, you have to download spe special um, drivers, oh. whatever, from Red. Or you can take it into Photoshop. That is so weird. Okay, so this is the, this other Photoshop. Oh, whoa, that looks so cool. <laughs> okay, so this is, so in, within Photoshop, you have this um, red reader yeah. that they've loaded up into it. 
Yeah. So uh, what you do is you take the whole file and you find. Whoa. Yeah. It's, it's so 3D and cool looking. Yeah. So you find the you find the actual frame that you want. Yeah. If you want to do a still. Uh huh. Right. So this is, we're just going through the video right now. Yeah. Now this is very similar to another program. Um, I guess I didn't get the Whoa. whatever. But anyway, so That's you find, find the, slam that you, uh, the, the, the frame that you want. Yeah. And then you can adjust it just like in, Whoa. Just like in um, say, Lightroom or yeah. any other. Uh -huh. And, you know, change saturation, Whoa. Uh, change colors. You can either do it in Legacy or you can do it in what's called IPP2. Yeah, so IPP2. Those, are two, those are two different types of formats. Yeah. I keep it in Legacy because I have a little bit more control. Uh -huh. But IPP2 is like a, the you know, typical whatever format uh, that they use. You can change the high contrast. You can change the none. Um, the another thing is that what it also shoots in what's called H HDRX. HDRX. So, right. So HDR is not something that like photographers, still photographers like too much, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't think about it. But in video, it actually kind of makes sense. Because what HDR, if you, if you go back down here, you have an A-frame and an X-frame. So What's an A-frame and an X-frame? It's shooting in two different ISOs at the same time. What? So A-frame is that, and then you can adjust the X-frame to be lot lighter. Whoa. Right? And then you can do what's called a simple blend, yeah. where it blends them both. Or you can do what they call magic motion. Whoa. So then it like it really gives more of a Whoa. more of a cinematic, like kind of like look and wow. feel. Yeah. And like and and then what it works with is something that um, we call you know color contrast. It works with yeah. that. And then you can choose the color space, yeah. which Rec 709 or Rec 2020 is uh, like ProRes. Yeah. But you can also do um, you know different like gammas. There's red wide gamma. Yeah. which is like uh, more realistic because it's you know based it's a red you know phone you can do like different like different versions i usually keep it in uh rec 709 yeah some um cinematographers like um uh richard dawkins who did um blade runner and did yeah. a number of other different things he doesn't like 709 because it doesn't have as much color variance but like for those of us who are just going to throw something on YouTube or throw yeah. something on like the web, you know, we want to have something that has the closest like variety for um, most devices. And since most devices, 99 point, you know, I don't know what the numbers are, yeah. are like either Samsung or like Apple, yeah. you're, you know, it's like this kind of what works out really well. But Wait, if so you're doing something for cinema, you might want to do your research. Wait, so question. So mm -hmm. now you can do all this epic stuff with a camera like a rat or even a lot of um, other cinema cameras or uh -huh. even you know, 4k cameras uh-huh why take still photos that's a really I you know it's funny because, <laughs> good question right yeah because I did I mean it's like on this last shoot that you know um, I just did I was I was using the red I was doing my stills first and I was using the red afterwards well there's a few different things I mean some people just some people just Say, oh, I can just turn the red sideways and get like a landscape, you know, or yeah. a portrait photo, uh -huh. or I can do this. And there are actually, if you go to Red's website, yeah. you know, you can see that they have uh, a numerous like still photographers that have used the red to, I mean, an uh, earlier version of this yeah. camera to shoot covers for magazines, wow. right? So, so in one way, it's like, yeah, why would you do it? But I think that it's also the physical physically taking a camera like you know a Leica and something like that and capturing the very shot that you want yeah. you know is different and you know it's like I think that these two things are separate mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of ways yeah. um, and I think you know maybe my my idea might change over the next few years mm -hmm. and I might think that like whatever but I think that there's actually like a property yeah. and also you're getting a higher resolution photo if you're shooting a still camera mm -hmm. you're you're yes Bobo yes Bobo <laughs> Yeah, it's got like yeah. this. It's like an egg crate. Yeah. Um, you're doing, you know, you're doing something a little bit different when you're shooting, when you're shooting with a with a film camera. That said, if I can do everything that I need to do with the red files, I mean, who's to say? And if and I can put my lenses, any of my lenses on it, um, 
you know, who's to say that that might not be more um, the one-stop shop camera for uh, everything. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm not getting rid of my still cameras right away, but like, and also, you know, the size and, yeah. um, and everything of it is different. But then, you know, um, as soon as ProRes RAW becomes, I mean, I haven't played with that, but as soon as that becomes more of a standard on um, still cameras, that might actually give you the same or very similar kind of properties as this, um, even in Lightroom. I mean, you may be able to take all of your videos into Lightroom and actually export out individual frames. That yeah. would be pretty epic, or Capture One. Uh, I mean, because right now, this is getting ready to go into, you know, so this, you get this uh, exactly the way that you want it, yep. whatever, as much as you want. And then I can go, okay, and this is a still from before, and wow. it opens up. And so then that wow. file opens up in Photoshop. Because you wouldn't even tell that like this was a still from a video camera. You right. just like, it just looks like a normal still, but it actually looks like a really aesthetically nice looking right. still photo as well. That's a right. nice picture you shot of my mom too, by oh, the way. There, there you go. And yeah. then, you know, and then you can wow. just do the things that you would normally do to a still photo. Yeah. You know, yeah. and also here's the thing that is crazy. Yep. So you go to image size, right? Yep. So that's a 72 DPI at 71 inches by 31 inches. Yeah. Change that resolution to 300, which is normal print size. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have done it that way. Um, go back to image size. Yep. Nine by 17. Wow. So that's inches, right? That's, yeah. So like you're looking at like something that can be printed at 17 inches by nine. Wow. Or you can crop in. So as they say, we want to crop into this shot, uh -huh. right? So we crop into like a normal like four by five, whatever, eight by 10 format, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Just crop in. And then you have a image size that is still, 9 by 7. Wow, which is still like a proper print. Proper print size, yeah, right? Yeah, that's... From a, from a video still. That's insane. So, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I do think that the physical aspect of taking a still photo still has some merit. And also, your lighting capability for taking a still photo by using a strobe to have the power of a strobe, and I, I know this for a fact because I was just in a really, really dark room, so that red lighting that I have, so that, that's continuous light. Yeah. So we have LEDs that are not so hot, yeah. right? And they're, they're, it's not quite as much as like other types of lighting sources mm -hmm. that were very, very, very hot and you had to have like larger like sources and things like that to get, get, get the things done. But, <clears throat> To take, a, to take a still photo with a flash or with a strobe, you know, the lighting is another thing that you have to like really consider. It's like, yep. how I'm, it's like if, if, if I'm taking five or six different, just, uh, you know, Pelican cases or three or four Pelican yep. cases full of cameras, how many lights cases am I taking? I mean, I can tell you on this last shoot, we had three big cases of of Kinoflow lights. I mean, these oh, were like, man. you know, nine by nine by 12 cases of Kinoflow yeah. lights just to get the same setup as my uh, Profoto B1 and B2 to get that same light setup for the video as I did for stills. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's another, and that's another consideration. But the red also comes out what's called a Gemini, mm -hmm. which has like a light sensitivity that is beyond the A7, uh, A7S you know, uh, capability, which I guess is like the standard now for low light, right, correct? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that that's like yeah, the, for right. the digital cameras. Yeah. Uh, and the um, RED's Gemini 5K sensor, which is the same size sensor as this, yeah. right? Supposedly, I mean, and I've seen some of the footage from it, uh, you know, it's like it looks basically the way that your eye looks in darkness. Oh and God. also the, the, it doesn't have as much, uh, hardly any noise at ISO 12,500. Oh my God. So, you know, so because it's doing that thing that we just showed you where it's like it's doing dual ISO. It might be doing part of it in ISO 800 and part of it in ISO 12,500 and then it's combining the two. So you're getting, you know, I mean, maybe more camera manufacturers should do like the dual ISO. Oh. I mean, it's like, you know, not worrying about autofocus and megapixels, but like actually making these cameras usable in every situation. I don't know. 
Um, cinema cameras opened op opened up my mind a lot uh, to not only potential but also like the differences in cinema process and still process. I do think that there's still validity in both. Ah, so um, who um, so for people who are like myself who are interested in cinema getting started. Who are some cinematographers or certain films you would recommend watching? Like some of your personal favorites or recommendations or things you've heard of or seen? Okay. Um, uh, so for major films, um, I, mean, I think Eric's already gone into Kubrick. Mm -hmm. uh, Kubrick was a was a still photographer, yeah. so he's going to be able to get like a lot more. You know, you're going to be able to like see like a lot of his frames. 2001, um, yeah. The Shining. Um, uh, especially the shining the shining has some really interesting like we're also Wait, sorry. Okay. so um so kubrick and the shining kubrick and the shining uh we also have uh, uh akira kurosawa um which is just a just amazing whatever filmmaker uh -huh. um uh any of the cinematography work by uh, richard dawkins richard dawkins yeah um it, the guy that just did, recently did the uh the second blade runner uh 2049 what other films have you done oh my gosh that's a really good question let's look that up he also has a website richard it's funny i think richard dawkins is also the guy who wrote the book the selfish gene oh or, I mean, they probably just shared the same Yeah, name. you're right. No, 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 no. It may not be Richard Dawkins. What is or it? we could just Google, like, cinematographer Blade Runner 2049. Roger Deakins. Oh, Sorry. Roger, Roger Deakins. Deakins. Oh, looks like he's that. been in the game for a while. Yeah, he's been around for a long time. <laughs> he kind of looks like... Uh, Interesting looking dude too. Yeah. So scare out Blade Runner 2049 Skyfall. Oh, he did Skyfall. Yeah. Okay. No Country for Your Old Man. Sh uh, Shawshank Redemption. Prisoners. Fargo. Oh, cool. This is all great films I love. Yeah. Wait, so I have a question. So, you know in a film there's a cinematographer and there's a director, right? Yes. Um, ultimately the cinematography or the framing or the visual storytelling mm -hmm. who controls that i mean it depends do you, I think. You, do, do you kind of see what my question yeah, is? yeah yeah i see what your question is it depends because i think that the cinematographer really has a lot more to do with um technical aspect and the cinematographer may not even be the operator the camera operator yeah. they may have a completely separate camera operator yeah. like say for instance you know some cinematographers like <laughs> sorry Roger Deakins yeah. uh, Roger Deakins is is that um, are known for their lighting techniques oh, okay. right you know uh, and then their choice they will choose they will ultimately choose the camera uh, or the cameras that will be used for the film, mm. but they won't necessarily deal with other things. Like a friend of mine that was a Hasselblad master, yeah. uh, that it was my downstairs neighbor, um, he ended up becoming a cinematographer. He, beca he became like a director of photography, right? After doing all of that. Mm. Another person that was a um, still photographer became a director. So it's going to be, so the roads are very similar, you know, oh, um, but it's just, you know, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to maybe like, you know, cover in future blogs and things yeah, like that, the difference I'm between these them. two, you know, or, or even more. I mean, there's also like the AC, which is like the focus, uh, focus puller, um, there's grips, there's all these oh. different people on a film set. And it's yeah. like, and if we're... We're just these people that are run and gun, one one man, one woman shows yeah. that like you know run out and like do our thing. Yeah. It's like, and we don't necessarily have like a full crew uh -huh. to do these things. How do we take care of that? Maybe looking at documentary filmmakers like mm. um, uh, that's another one that I'm thinking of. Um, let's see, let's see. So let's just look at the documentary filmmakers. Hmm. Uh, Michael Moore, Ken Burns. Um. You know the Ken Burns effect is actually from Ken Burns? Interesting. I think so, that's my theory. Yeah, so just doing uh, research on different documentary yeah. filmmakers. The, the top 10 documentary filmmakers uh, besides YouTube. Our job is to... 
Okay, skip ad, skip ad, skip ad, skip ad. Um, let's see who they are. This is. There's one that I'm specifically speaking of. Oh, this is the guy that did. Oh, the uh, Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, that guy. The McDonald's thing. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, looks like John Juno. No, but that's Scorsese. Scorsese. Yeah. Scorsese. Oh, just uh, research Scorsese. Yeah, research Scorsese. Oh, I love Scorsese. Yeah, good fellows, awesome. Good fellows. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. I mean, you're looking at like all these different people. Uh, you see another one that is really good to show. show. Master project they do talent or master class is that what it is? Master class, yeah, master class. Yeah, that's another interesting thing is like this master class. They have a numerous like film workers that you can look at. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, browse classes, you know, of course, Anna Leibovitz for photography, uh, which is Corsese. Um, writing. Film scoring, uh, dramatic writing, uh, fashion design, whatever. Uh, Werner Herzog. Oh, okay. Werner Herzog. Man, this, so I, I just Googled some of his films and things yeah. like that, and I was talking actually to um, Eggleston uh, yeah. about him. And, like, you know, he's the kind of person that is like the epitome of run and gun because he, like, would take. He was just like, well, you want to get that shot? You just take the camera, take it underneath your hand, pull, pull your arms together and go and get it. You know, I mean, it's just like, and, and he was using cameras a lot bigger than this. Wow. You know, I mean, so, uh, you know, just crazy. Hmm. Uh, no, these, these classes are good. Um, so, our Werner Halls are, let's just look at this. Werner so, And he also did like normal, Normal. Uh, yeah, uh, virtual reality, the future of human humanity and the internet. I mean, Whoa, what an interesting guy, dude. right? You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ten essential Werner Herzog movies. Yeah. Um, you know, from Divine Wrath to Gonzo Docs. So cool. You know, I mean, it's like you have uh, even dwarves started small in 1970. Yeah. Uh, the Wrath of God. This is. Very so many cool films to watch. Yeah, Heart of Glass, uh, Nosferatu the Vampire. So, um, oh, this one's supposedly really interesting. Uh, there were some other people that we were talking about earlier. Um, uh, Caves of so this is a, yeah, I mean, cool. just really interesting uh, film director. Uh, Scorsese, um, Wim Vendors. Oh, Wim Vendors, yeah. Yeah. So, you're looking at... Uh, uh, just, I mean, just going to IMDb, think of a film that you like and find find a thing. I mean, his filmography is known for um, Wings of Desire, Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas is just a beautiful film. I don't mm. know if you've ever seen the it. Cinema, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. But the cinematography on this film is just, you know, I'm just going to turn off. Criterion Collection is another place where you can really like see a lot of these films in their, their full this form. Time. Well, the cinematography looks amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, there's a, just great scenes from, I mean, it's like and use that handheld kind of, kind of way of seeing things and the way that they, long shots. Yeah. You know, it's Klaus Kinski. Um, wow. His daughter, Natasha Kinski, is in it. Um, there's some really great, great films for this. I mean, I mean, great scenes in this. Oh, that's a beautiful scene. Those are really beautiful. And like just low light. I mean, this scene, I think, I hope that they show it. 
Um, yeah. Well, let's just actually let's just look up peristalsis. So Whoa. these wide shots, I'm mean, just the colors, you know. Dude, these this colors room. are epic. You know, great colors. Just yeah. these wide shots. This is a really interesting scene. Um, so you're seeing different different lights. Yeah. Oh, you know? so blue on the right and one yeah. on the left. So he's one. He's inside, I believe, in in this particular scene, and then she comes up. Right, yeah. and then you see his face reflected. Oh, that's the, super epic! Right? And this is all; these are these are stills from the movie. Wow. So it's like you're seeing like the darker scene here, and then and then you have wow. to think about how that's lit, and then yeah. you have to think about like the, that reflection in there, like yeah. what's going on there, and it's like and this is he's talking to his wife, his former wife that you know ran off, and like he's just seeing her for the first time. That is uh, sick. I mean, just really interesting, um, you know. I mean, you're gonna get like you know, just these wide shots, you know. Yeah. This, you know, just these, it's, uh, just Whoa. these types of like deep that is colors. Epic. And th this was done in the '70s and '80s. I mean, these, freaking these hell, done in the '80s. So yeah. it's like, I mean, it's like, in a way, I mean, I feel like that, like a lot of times we're like kind of further behind. Yeah, why are we so like stuck in the past? <laughs> no. Man, I feel right. like we ought to play catch up, huh? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Man. Oh, I mean, wow. I mean like the lighting and so stuff like this. Good. You know. Uh, puts Eggleston to shame. Yeah. So and good. These are some other films. This is the King Kong film. Oh, it's he like, did King Kong film? Yeah. Oh, so cool. Oh, so like, that. you know, Oh wow, that looks so beautiful. Yeah. Man, I need to start shooting films, man. Yeah. Forget about this photography business. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, I mean, they're in tandem. I mean, photographers like, you know, cinematographers love uh, photographers, and photographers start to love cinematographers. You know, it's like, and we we're feeding each other, feeding off of it. They're two different forms. It was like, in, uh, someone told me once that, like, in photography, you're looking for that iconic moment. Yep. And in cinematography, you're looking for symbolism, you're looking for movement, yeah. you're looking for like all these different things, and you know, it's like maybe maybe that's really the that's really the situation, is that like if you want those iconic moments, you're going to find them in certain films, yeah. you know, but you're going to find them in a moment, and then you're you're continuing to tell the story. It's a long form as opposed to a short or fast form, mm. you know. So, Thank you so much for yeah. this introduction. How can uh, people find out more about your photography, contact you, follow you, etc.? Uh, uh, I'm on Instagram, Bill Brown, B I L Brown. Um, then uh, my website, uh, BillBrown.com, B I L Brown. Uh, is, that, is that yours? That oh, yours? yes. And uh, also, <laughs> uh, I have a, a show at the Leica Gallery on um, 2018, in June 28th. Cool. And this is. Uh, this was the image. Uh, these are from protests. So the the um, the gallery show is uh, from protest performance. New work from 2016 to 2018. Oh yeah. So anyone that knows anything about my work, you'll see a few images and mm. uh, pull up your pull up your website too. Oh sure. And then. Uh, so that's Bill with one L. One L. Yeah. BillBrown.com. Yeah. So these cool. are. I'm, I'm, I'm updating the site, but this is like some really, stuff. They look really good. Um, you know, some of the stuff there. Uh, and then also did this thing with, uh, uh, which uh, Eric hasn't seen. Oh, it does look solid. So this is mylar. Whoa. So I shot into reflective mylar. And Whoa, did these, that's super cool. These portraits. Dude, that's some next level shit. Yeah, so this was, Whoa. This was a lot of fun. That's so, super cool. That was on. And then you can, you know, look at uh, magazines like Flaunt, uh, Flaunt.com. This yeah. is where this, the, 
this was this was done with this was 57 different looks and 27 different this is Annie Lennox's daughter yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's uh, yeah and this is uh, Bradley Yoda's daughter so if you're looking about Goodfellows this Sweet. is her daughter oh dude uh, but like this this was all natural in camera there was no like, that's epic very little post editing that's so cool contrast um, great photos yeah that's then, great done. you know you can kind of tell man just the way this is all this is not photoshop this that is, all is epic camera. that is so cool so anyway so yeah so you can just you know look at stuff like that sick and um, yeah and I, I do have a youtube channel and oh yeah you pull up your youtube oh my gosh yeah um, I'll, I'll link to your youtubes too because okay. uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more videos from you to come bill brown Oh, uh, yep, there yeah. you go. Oh, yeah. That's this one. Ooh, that video I did with you. Yeah. See you there, nice. So this one. Come on, you gotta make some more videos, bro. I gotta make some more videos. Make yeah. some more. So You're this is books, influences, and live. Yeah. And, you know, there's a street, uh, this uh, street history. Oh, these look really good. Uh, photography, three degrees of separation. Yep. And I did do that series a little That's bit That's really more. good. Yeah, keep and it up. Shooting Taylor oh, in downtown LA. So good. Okay, I'll, I'll link to these in the blog too because cool. these are really cool stuff. Cool. And then I'll, oh. I'll keep on going, especially like with the stuff that like is. Uh, is going over a little bit more. Here's yeah. that interview with uh, uh, that I did before. One yeah, time. dude, and, that's and, yeah. sick. And Man, only one year ago, huh? Yeah, it's only a year dude. ago. Dude, all right. So we're gonna, I'm gonna pimp out your channel. Thank you. Keep pumping out videos and all making right. cool. Well, now clips. I can definitely do it a lot. Oh more yeah. More. I think I'll. We'll, we'll do. Uh, I tell you what. Um, I'll I'll do a little bit of something about like some of the process about yeah. the red and and I actually like using it in a creative environment and using it as a single person too. Um, and then like uh, get into a few other different things. But anyway. Dude. All right. Thanks, dude. Bill Brown, Ciao, the guys. man, the legend, the poet, the filmmaker. We'll link to him and everything below. Sick. All right. Okay. Sick. Bye, bye, friends. Oh. I am. Uh, Bye bye, Ona. Bye, bye Emma. Bye, Cindy. And check out <laughs> this beautiful natural line here with all these beautiful people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Big huggy. Oh, big huggy. Oh. Big huggies all around. The creative mind of an artistic genius. Why don't you take the picture over the big bag? Oh, the big bag? Which one? Oh, I did. That's so. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Wow. And then, Emma, where do you upload your work? Um, I don't. Oh, <gasps> dun dun dun. We're working on that. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Um, the top three are bills. Uh huh. Um, this one is my friend Clay um, Nielsen's print. Yeah. And this is an Ansel Adams. Whoa. <laughs> Super! Dude, mountains for the win. Oh, is this San Jose? It's really nice. It's probably the nicest photo I've ever seen of San Jose. That's true. Oh, can you get a, a look at the view outside? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Dun, 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 dun. If you, if you take around back. Oh, not yet. I know. This gate. Walk through that gate and around the building. Okay. We just scoop around to the right. Whoa. I feel like I'm in the matrix. Whoa. 
holy moly Hello! Hey, hey! It's a plane! It's a big one! Oh, it's a big one! Wow, it's down there! This is what downtown LA looks in 2018. Wonder what it'll look like in a few years. Hey. Yeah. Nice hey. view, huh? I see tall. What do you see there? Yeah, I see tall. Yeah, you see tall? Yeah. Wow. Insanely epic. everything but Whoa. this is a gimbal so you can connect a smaller camera like to it and then uh, when you turn it on, uh, turn it on this way. watch watch the top oh my goodness so then the idea is is that well, I'll turn it off because we'll have a camera attached to it. Our robot overlords. Yeah, but what the idea is is that when you're going down and you're holding a camera, that it stabilizes it completely. Yeah. So, so like a camera like the Lumix, then you just have to weigh it on there at first, or like the camera like the um, uh, SL that I just put away. It's yeah. like it has a it has a better thing, and then it has this little tripod uh, leg for the bottom that you can connect to that. You can also connect things on the side. And if you have a, if you have a, okay, if you have a Panasonic or you have other things, you can actually do your focusing. We'll, we'll, we'll meet you up for breakfast tomorrow, yeah? Sure, there you go, all right. Dude, I want to, I want to just like, I want to, okay, I'm going to put up a cut, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You'll be squatted. Right. You'll be squatted. Yeah. Yeah.